This is the Newton's Third Law portion of your lab for this week. And um, I just wanted to show you that we're going to make some measurements here. And remember in class I told you that um, the forces are equal. We said that if one object exerts a force on a second object, then the second object exerts an equal and opposite force back on the first. And so I just am going to do some demonstration collisions um, for you here using some force sensors. So these are force sensors. The springs on here record the amount of force. And one thing I want you to notice here first is that we are measuring the force completely independently of each other. You can see that we have two force sensors, two wires, and they're connected over here to the Lab Pro, which we'll show you in just a minute. But first, I'm going to push on this spring, and I want you over here on the computer to look at the value when I push on this. So over here, if you look at force three, I'm holding down on that spring on the sensor and you can see that the value is high. If I take my thumb off of the sensor, you can see that it goes back down close to zero. If I push on it again, you can see that it goes back up. If I push on the other sensor, and here I am pushing with my thumb on force sensor number four, you can see that there it goes up and if I let go, it goes down. And if you uh, pan back over here now, you can see that we're just uh, pushing on the sensor over here without me touching the other one. So the point of this is that we're measuring the force completely independently with these two sensors. And so this first scenario that we're going to do is there's two sensors measuring independently. I'm going to collide the, these as if they were cars. Now right now this has a mass of about one kilogram. This one is identical, mass of about one kilogram. And I'm going to do a set of collisions between these two things, just simulating car collisions. Um, but these would be identical cars. So first I'm going to have this one and collide into this one, then this one collide into this one, uh, both moving in opposite directions to simulate a head-on collision. Uh, one bumping into the other from behind, and then the other way uh, bumping into this one from behind. And so um, I'm just going to go ahead and do these collisions very quickly for you, and then we'll look at what the graphs say about the collisions. So here we go. All right, so here's the first one, second one, opposite directions, same direction moving, same direction this way moving. And now if you um, look over here on the computer, we can see what it is that we got. Now, the first thing, I'm going to include these graphs in your um, file that you can actually include these in your lab report. But first, the thing I want you to notice is that um, the, the peaks look very similar between the green one and the orange one. Now, one thing, we are measuring completely independently with these two sensors. And so anytime you measure with two different measuring devices, you're all get, always going to get slightly different readings. And we've talked about the error associated with measurements. If you look at this one, on the first peak, the green one is a little bit higher than the orange one here. And that's because of the fact that the green one is measuring a little bit higher than the orange one. If you look at this peak, this one is a little bit higher than this one. And the same would be true here and for this one and for this one over here. So it's a consistent measurement all the way down. But if we look at this first set of peaks, which was that first collision that I did, what I want you to notice is that essentially these two are exactly the same in height. And um, here's the second collision I did. Again, these two are exactly the same in height. And again, for the third collision. Now, one thing we notice about the third collision is that the peak is just generally higher. That's because the cars were moving in opposite directions and that collision is just simply more violent than if we only have one car moving. And then at these last two collisions, again, these are the same height and these two are the same height, but these are less violent. There's less force involved here. And that's just because they were moving in the same direction. So a car hitting another one from behind, if it's moving in the same direction, it's just simply less violent than if they were going in opposite directions like this one. So I'm going to save this graph, um, and I'm going to, I'm going to save it as um, same mass. And I'll provide that for you um, so that you can look at it in detail. Now, I'd like to do a second set of collisions for you. 
And the second set that we're going to do is this one here. <clears throat> most people, by the way, on this first set of collisions that we did, most people would, would expect that the forces would be equal because the masses of the carts were equal that we had um, when we were doing the collisions. So here, what we're going to do is a series of, the same series of collisions, but we're going to do it, now this is twice the mass of this one. Uh, this has a mass of about two kilograms, where this has a mass of only about one. And for the two kilogram one, that would be like an SUV, and this would be like a small car. It's not exactly the, uh, the Mack truck example with the smart car, the small car over here, uh, but it's getting closer. And so let's go through and we'll do the same series of collisions again using these two cards. And again, we'll look at the forces and see what we get. All right, so here we go. There's that one. There's that one. Opposite directions. Going in the same direction this way. Same direction this way. All right. So now if you can look over here at the graphs that we just collected, what you'll see is... Well, we would expect that because one has twice as much mass, many people tell me when I ask the question, they say, well, if they're twice as much mass, as one has twice as much mass, you would get twice as much force. And the question is, do we see that actually happening in our graphs? Well, here's our first set of graphs. Again, you can see that the green one is consistently measuring just a little bit higher than the orange one. But you can see that these two are exactly the same height within our measurement error. So the force on the larger one is exactly the same as the force on the smaller one. And then here we have their second collision, and here's our third collision, um, our fourth and our fifth. And you can see, again, top to bottom, the forces are all exactly the same. So this is Newton's third law in action. It says that if one exerts a force on a second, then the second exerts an equal and opposite force back on the first. And so we get to see that in action right here. So, um, the third situation that I would like to do for you, people are, are, are many times convinced by seeing this and by being able to look at the graphs. By the way, I'm going to go ahead and save these for you. Um, and I'm going to call these different maths so that you can um, identify it. And so there we have a saved copy of that. And now what I'm going to do, some people have said, well, that's just for collisions, things that are bumping together. What I would like to do here is just simply hold the two together and push. And I'll push with one hand, or I'll push with the other hand, or I'll push with both hands. And then we'll see what the graphs look like for that, if they are just always in contact. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit collect here, and I'll just here I'm pushing with my left hand, here I'm pushing with my right hand, here I'm pushing with both hands, here I'm kind of playing around a little bit, and here I'm pulling apart. And I want you to look at the graph over here that you see. So here's the graph that we just made, and what I want you to notice is that again, these two graphs look identical. It doesn't matter which hand I'm pushing with, or if I'm pushing with both of them, um, you can see that the, the forces disappear at the same time. Um, the green one is reading just a little bit higher than the orange one, just consistently, and it comes out to look exactly the same in terms of the forces. Um, one last thing that I want you to see with this is, um, and then by the way, I'm going to save this as in contact, so I'll go ahead and save it for you here. Okay, so there we've got a copy of that one. Um, I had a, a, a student just uh, recently that I showed this demonstration to, and they said, well, that's still true, but you're, you're still pushing with both, and they're both allowed to move, or, they're, or neither one of them is moving, and you're just pushing with a hand. So what I like to do is just hold one of these two stationary, so it's not allowed to move. It's like having a brick wall here. And I'm going to go ahead and just collide the other one into it. And I'll do it with the extra mass on here, and then I'll take the extra mass off, and I'll collide it with the extra mass off too. And you'll, again, get to see what the graph looks like. 
So here's one, take the mass off, do it a couple more times here. I'll do a hard one too. Okay? And then you can look at the graph here again. So if one is held stationary and the other one is allowed to move and rebound off of the first, again we see the green one is reading just slightly higher than the other one and we see that the forces are identical on both graphs. Again, just reading slightly higher on one than the other one because of our measurement. So the general conclusion that I want you to get from this is that it, we're measuring with two different measuring devices, measuring force independently, and what we're seeing is consistently the forces are being measured as exactly the same. Now remember, when we do these collisions, um, we, we can't see the force. So when you see a car collision, you're not seeing the forces involved. What you're seeing are the accelerations of the cars. And some, of, some people have noticed that if I do this collision, um, this cart over here, this car, goes shooting off very, very quickly. The acceleration of this cart is not the same as the acceleration of this cart. If you just focus on this cart, watch it when it strikes this one. It will slow down, but it does not slow down tremendously. Okay? Watch this one, and when this one hits it, watch what happens. It speeds up dramatically. And so the accelerations are not the same here because the masses aren't the same here. But the forces are the same. This one has a higher acceleration but a lower mass. This one has a lower mass but a, uh, excuse me, a higher mass but a lower acceleration. And so the forces end up being identical. So hopefully I've been able to convince you and you can go ahead and download those graphs and you can look at them and analyze them and hopefully you find uh, that the forces are identical within our measurement error. So thank you.